Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Cathedral Church of St. Mark. Thank you for joining us for online worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. And Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they, were both, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. A God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. The Lord, the God of God, has spoken. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the Gospel's telling of the life of Jesus, the Transfiguration is a pivotal moment. It is a turning point, poised structurally as a hinge. The revelation of Christ in radiant glory on the mountain points back to baptism and points forward to crucifixion, both the beginning and end of Jesus' earthly ministry. At his baptism, the same voice was heard from heaven, saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The transfiguration comes just after Peter has first confessed Jesus as Messiah. Jesus then tells the misunderstanding disciples that he must suffer and die before he is raised. This mountaintop vision is a preview of the glory of the resurrected Christ and of the kingdom of God, and a definitive revelation of the true identity of Jesus as the Son of God. Elijah, the quintessential prophet, and Moses, the giver of the law, make a dramatic appearance, further witnessing to Jesus' identity and mission. Together, Moses and Elijah represent all the law and the prophets of Israel, which have pointed toward the hope and promise now fulfilled in Jesus. He is the perfect, complete, lived expression of both law and prophets. Only love can fulfill the law, and he is love embodied. In Luke's version, it's immediately after the transfiguration that Jesus sets his face toward Jerusalem, embarking on the final journey that moves inevitably, purposefully, toward the crucifixion, and three days later, the empty tomb. So the transfiguration is bookended with baptism on one end and the passion and resurrection on the other. On our church calendar, we are about to make the same turn Jesus makes after the transfiguration, walking through to Holy Week. Lent begins with Ash Wednesday in a few short days, if you can believe it. The liturgical calendar of the church year is one way we enter into scripture seeing our lives through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As Christians, we read scripture with the open-hearted faith that through these ancient words, God speaks to us in our contemporary moment. Not trapped in a dusty past, but the living word. Year after year, we walk through this story again, and it's etched deeper into our hearts. We come to see that the arc of our own life always takes place within and in connection to the story of the one who is life itself. So when we come to the last Sunday of the Epif after the Epiphany, the last Sunday before Lent, today, and we hear about the Transfiguration, we're listening not just to the remembrance of a past that happened to other people in another place long ago. We listen trusting that Jesus is alive and that this story says something about our lives, about your life. The Transfiguration gives us a glimpse of the glory to be revealed in Christ and in each of us. The Collect for today highlights this connection. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Witnessing Christ's glory is strengthening and sustaining, this colic tells us. As we make this turn into Lent, beholding Christ's glory is what will strengthen us to bear our cross, to follow Jesus on the journey through the wilderness. This might be somewhat surprising. After all, Peter, James, and John, beholding Christ's glory on the mountain, are afraid. They did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Icons of the Transfiguration uh, show Peter, James, and John collapsed at a distance below Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. They, along with their assumptions about self and world, are thrown to the ground. And fear of God's awesome glory is not uncommon in Scripture. The Israelites were relieved to send Moses up the mountain for them, saying, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. And they made Moses cover his shining face when he returned from speaking with the Lord. Today's psalm says of God's glory, Before him there is a consuming flame, round about him a raging storm. Or as the letter to the Hebrews puts it, our God is a consuming fire. So beholding Christ's glory on the mountain, the disciples are afraid. 
standing like we do on the threshold of Lent, I think many of us carry latent or sometimes blatant associations of Lent with terror, with fear and a shaming negation of the self before a God we can never please. A God, incidentally, who does not exist, but, uh, but lives, <laughs> lives within us and, and governs us at times. Uh, I'll tell you a, a little story. As a teenager, unfamiliar with liturgical Christianity, my understanding, my first understanding of Lent uh, was that it was the time when high school girls stopped eating lunch and started checking the scale every day. So God became a tool of, of self-loathing and reproach. How convenient it would be and how awful if God turned out to hate all the things about you that you hate about you. But God hates nothing that God has made. God has plans to do you good and not to harm you. God loves us exactly as we are. This is a rock-solid, secure, stable love without condition. You didn't earn it, and you can't lose it. This is the steadfast love we restlessly search for in every person and everything until we find it in God. This steadfast love is like manna in the desert new each morning, sustaining and nourishing us for whatever lies ahead. To behold Christ's glory is to recognize him as the image of God, as Paul says. To recognize in Christ that he is love embodied and given for us. Beholding Christ's glory, recognizing him as the image of God. Anyone who knows the Son knows the Father. We can come to trust God and trust that God has plans to do us good and not to do us harm. And so the invitation to a life of holiness does not mean the annihilation of the self. The dazzling, transfigured Jesus, the consuming flame, calm at the center of a raging storm, is the same Jesus who said he brings us his peace. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God gently draws us into the divine life refines us and purifies us so that we can stand to perceive that radiant glory. Yes, our God is like a refiner's fire, a consuming flame. But not all is consumed. Our pretensions and hurts, our traumatized, conditioned, fearful responses, our habits of lashing out and shutting down, are slowly but steadily washed away in that flame as the Holy Spirit does its work on us. Like precious metal, our true essence is revealed. Spiritual disciplines are not meant to erase us, but to slowly, steadily give us back to ourselves. We are refined in flame, but not annihilated. The ashes are real, but so is eternal life. God, who created the world, who said, let light shine, also created each of us, called us into being and called us good. Christ, the light shining in your heart from beginning, sorry, the essential core of yourself is a refraction of Christ and the light that has shown in your heart from the beginning. And that light remains, is purified and amplified, it's magnified. As Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord. And iron left in the fire eventually takes on the burning quality of that flame as long as it remains in the fire. When they are rooted in the vine, the branches flourish. Living water springs up in the soul that stays connected to the gracious source of all. There's a great little story from the Desert Fathers demonstrating the purpose of our spiritual practices and disciplines. Abbot Lot came to Abbot Joseph and said, Father, according as I am able, I keep my little rule and my little fast, my prayer, meditation, and contemplative silence. And according as I am able, I strive to cleanse my heart of thoughts. Now what more should I do? The elder rose up in reply and stretched out his hands to heaven. And his fingers became like ten lamps of fire. He said, why not be totally changed into fire? The purpose or end of Christian life is to be transfigured ourselves. Beholding Christ's glory, trusting our loving God, we don't just believe things or do things, but we become something, become someone. The face of Christ shines through our own, and we are freed to give our lives to others and to God as an offering in grateful response. 
This is all the law and the prophets, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, might, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. We too become embodiments of love. So why not be totally changed into fire? Lord Jesus, we pray that beholding by faith the light of your countenance, we may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into your likeness from glory to glory. Amen. Standing as we are able, let us affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of, of all that, that is seen and unseen. And unseen. We, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten of the Father, God, from God, from God light from light, light true God, God from true God, God, begotten not made, of one, one being with the Father, Father through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us go to the mountain of God's generosity, offering our prayers as we respond. Hear us, God, God of, of glory. glory. That we may offer ourselves to the refashioning hands of the divine potter, who centers, molds, and changes us into vessels of grace. Let us pray. Hear us, God of glory that we may admit our faults, our desire to keep things as they are and to return to things that never were, so that when Christ invites us into transformed life, we may readily answer his call. Let us pray. Hear us, God of glory. For a vigorous spirit of mutual cooperation and unity, that we may treasure the common ground which we share with the whole Anglican communion and work together to share in the fruits of God's kingdom across our nations, cultures, tribes, and peoples. Let us pray. Hear us, God of glory. For the cessation of war, that armaments of destruction may be made into tools for development, and that resources spent on the fields of battle may instead support the basic necessities of life. Let us pray. Hear us, God of glory for a commitment to a life of simplicity, that we may preserve for generations to come the beauty of land and sea and sky and the complexity of every living creature. Let us pray. Hear us, God of glory. For the sick and the suffering and all those who feel alone and forgotten, especially Rebecca Davenport and Bunny Davenport, Alice and David, Suzanne and Bucky, the Broadband family, and those afflicted by the shooting in Buffalo, Minnesota, those in our parish prayer list, and those we name either silently or aloud. Let us pray. Hear us, God of glory. That those who have died may experience the blessed rest of everlasting peace especially David Broadbent, and the victim of the shootings in uh, Buffalo, Minnesota. Let us pray. Hear us, God of glory. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Mm -hmm. 
most merciful God, we confess confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, word, and deed, deed, by what we have done and by what we we have left undone. We We have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We We have have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him You have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Mark, our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author, of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God.
ever mindful of our brothers and sisters, those members of the one body who are unable to receive the body and blood of Christ at this time. Let us pray together the prayer at the top of page 17. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though your people cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that they have received the forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And praying together the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.